Hey, good morning everybody. This is Ruben, Ruben Paredes, RP Images, Fremont on Instagram. You guys will catch my videography and some of my photography work there. San Miguel Bulls, that's where you'll actually see my actual dogs. I pr primarily breed uh, standard dogs, uh, French Bulldogs. And today um, I've been uh, whelping a litter. Uh, I actually helped deliver four of the puppies. She had them naturally. One of them was breached. Um, you know, that was a, an interesting experience that I haven't uh, done that in a while. Usually breached means when an animal is coming in a formation where it's not intended to come. Usually, you know, the bum is coming in first and sometimes they can get lodged in between the hips. So I'll despair you and save you the details on that on how I helped uh, deliver that puppy. But uh, his name is Larry, I said his name is Larry. Uh, but today we're gonna talk a little bit about eclampsia. And what is eclampsia? Eclampsia usually happens uh, in cows and cattle in the farms. Usually people will call that term as downers, you know, when a cow's been, um, you know, uh, pushing and pushing and pushing with contractions and the calf is not delivered. So that also happens in dogs. And as a matter of fact, I'm gonna quote uh, Jose from Rio's Frenchies. Uh, we saved one of his dogs last year, but you gotta know what to look for. It's also known as a um, hypocalcemia, hypo meaning deficiency, and paretinal tetany. Reason why tetany is that when the dog is uh, finally in the stages where it just can no longer contract because the lack of calcium, calcium is needed for muscle contractions, is that they'll kind of spasm and they'll just kind of like lay in a spazzed out um, situation. The great thing about it is that it, it, it uh, also, it is a, a medical, at that point it's a medical emergency. By that point we would be putting in uh, uh, a catheter. Let's see if I can get this to, oops, there we go. An IV catheter and uh, Frenchies, you know, uh, 24, 25 gauge, this is about the size. And this goes right in the vein, uh, bigger dogs, you'll want to go with like a, a 22, 23, See, can we catch that? You know, right there, there's the numbers right there. And with that, you notice that as the number increases, as the number increases, something happens with the diameter. A lot of people get it mixed up. So as the number increases, you'll notice right here it says 24 GA, that stands for gauge. And um, as the number increases, actually the gauge becomes a smaller, meaning a, a thinner, a smaller diameter. So Frenchies, you know, 24 gauge, uh, 25 sometimes. Puppies, we have to go up to 26, 28. It's really hard to get in them. So after that, you know, what happens is that they're lacking the calcium and vice versa. When you over supplement a dog, a female per se with um, too much calcium, say like they're pregnant and you're giving them, and this happens quite often, is that you're giving them a lot of cottage cheese, a lot of calcium, it'll actually, uh, start to mess with their parathyroid and when that happens then you've just created another problem you know so in this particular case my female I notice I'm, I'm gonna supplement her with some lactated ringers uh, most commonly if anyone that's in the profession uh, will probably know it as uh, LRS and the reason why I like using this and we're actually gonna go subcutaneously meaning right over the skin I'm gonna use um, an 18 gauge needle. And obviously the lower the number, the thicker because we're going through the skin. It's like you're just giving an injection. You're going subcutaneous, like you're giving an injection. I use a lure lock. Lure lock meaning that once you put the needle in, you go in and it locks in. And then it's gonna be gravity fed. You know, I'm gonna gravity feed it. I'm gonna put it onto this um, stand I got out here. You guys can't see it because you're on the camera. And what you'll notice that LRS has lactated ringer solution and it has a, um, um, a calcium chloride. It has like about 20 milligrams in, in water and it's dispersed, dispersed, I'm sorry, throughout the bag of 1000 milliliters. I mean, we'll do the conversion mathematically and give you exactly what the numbers it, it needs. I mean, what the actual numbers are. So I like using this preferred method and I use it as a preventative. And I noticed that she's been a very good mom. She's been uh, feeding a lot. And so dogs, smaller dogs, you know, Yorkies, Los Opsos, Frenchies of really good moms, they tend to continuously feed and they deplete themselves of calcium. So right now she looks a little bit, you know, like she's really been going to work. And um, I'm actually gonna do a, a, um, a live one so you guys can see what I'm doing and everything. 
and uh, it's not this is not meant to diagnose and it's not an educational this is just information that I'm putting out there guys so with that being said I just need to cover my, my basis from uh, from a legality standpoint so you guys will see what I'm gonna do right here in a few seconds I'm gonna go ahead and grab Queenie and uh, we're gonna give her some subcutaneous fluids here's a rivet right here where you can control and now there is an actual formula you know we can break that down and I can give you roughly but right now I'm just kind of look over her skin and I'm gonna look for that little hump to prevail and it's all it's just a preventative both for dehydration and to get proper um, calcium levels in there now the other reason I like using this is that the main three components the main three electoral electrolytes excuse me <laughs> I'm, I'm so sleep deprived guys but I'm gonna take advantage um, every day that I'm whelping and if there's a tip that I can give you guys I'm gonna take advantage and give it to you guys uh, especially I don't like to just talk I like to actually do it you know so long story short is that it, when that happens uh, the main three components when somebody even humans the main three electrolytes is sodium potassium chloride this contains the sodium potassium chloride now if we did some blood work and they're overabundant in those electrolytes then we would use something a different source you know maybe a dextrose or um, uh, sodium chloride you know really depends but for like this we're not I'm over analyzing it now so right now I'm gonna go ahead and grab Queenie and then I'm gonna show you guys um, how to do this really quick okay so sorry guys I don't have my assistant extraordinaire Reina uh, but this is a little Queenie she just uh, gave birth to a amazing set of eight puppies she's only 18 pounds so what you're gonna do is um, notice that I do the tent She's not dehydrated, the skin is popping right back into place. You can do a capillary refill time test on their gums, right here, and see how quick it fills in. Less than two seconds, boom. See how quick it fills, it gets pink. It's called a CRT, capillary refill time. Take the needle, this is a brand new needle. Bevel up. That's the bevel right there, you want it to be facing up. And you're gonna go, come here mama. Right in between, like if you're giving an injection, right here. It's okay, mama, stay right there. And I'm, I'm, I'm alone doing this, so usually I have my, well, you go right to the skin, and I open up, and the fluid starts to drip in. It's starting to go in. There you go. So I'll do this, and it's all gravity fed. It's all gravity fed. You know, I'll do this and you can see it, you know, you see the fluids trickling down. It, you know, it goes, it, as, as, you, as I pick it up higher, it'll actually move quicker, you know. So if I pick it up, I can't, I wish I could have, I had somebody here managing the camera, but you'll notice that the fluids are starting to trickle down there. And you just want to, you know, keep it there and it, it'll go pretty quick, you know. And what you guys are gonna notice is right here, she's gonna start to form a hump. I usually, a dog like this, I'll probably do about 150, maybe 200 mLs. And we're just doing this as a preventative. That's it, that's all. Strictly prevention. We're not treating eclampsia. She does not have eclampsia, but I'm just giving you the insight of what you would do now. If this was, like I said, an actual emergency, I would be putting a catheter in her. I'd put in this catheter right into her vein, 24 gauge needle catheter. You know, and um, and I have a, a a pump, a pump that will actually, uh, once I do the fluid uh, ro uh, calculations, you know, it'll 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 tell me exactly what to do and how much to give in there. You know, I can do it all by hand, but like, oh my goodness, and you can see like I can squeeze on the bag, and you'll see the fluids are trickling down. And we saved a dog from eclampsia uh, last year, uh, Rios Frenchies, Jose. And you'll notice that that hump starting to grow right there on her back. You guys can see it. All in the name of education. Right there. Boom. It's looking like a little camel. And she's getting all worked up because she whoop. <laughs> she can hear her puppies in the background. You know, she can hear her puppies. But there you go. You see that hump right there? So we've roughly already gotten about 100, 150 mLs, milliliters in there. And you can see it. It's going in there. And it's creating that nice little hump that I'm looking for. And like I said, it's all in the name of prevention. So I hope you guys um, learned something. 
and you guys can uh, hopefully not have to deal with the clamps yet. But if you do, you guys at least have an idea of what to look for and how to potentially treat it. It's like I said, this is not meant to treat or, or diagnose. Atta girl, good girl. So with that being said, over and out.